Hi everyone and welcome to the first video of Bluetooth oriented ASCAL. In this course we are going to introduce you to ASCAL and the course is called Bluetooth oriented ASCAL since of course you are on a channel in which the name contains blockchain dev. So of course we are going to learn ASCAL in order to write smart contracts on Cardano in particular and since ASCAL is a general purpose language that means it is a very vast language and we are only interested in learning it in order to write smart contracts. So this course is not intended to make you an expert of ASCAL, but the main goal here is to get comfortable with the syntax of the programming language so that we can get the best from our contracts. Now you'll find the code of this course by going on Michelinus slash Bluetooth oriented ASCAL on GitHub, and this repository will be updated with each video. And in this video, we are going to set up our environment in order to write ASCAL code. So, ASCAL is a compiled language, even if it is possible to interpret it, and we'll see how later in this video. But in order to install the compiler, we'll need GAC app, which as written here, is an installer for the general purpose language ASCAL. Now, since the main goal of this course is to learn ASCAL in order to write Bluetooth, you have to know that most of the software Cardano related only works on Unix like operating system so you may want to use a virtual machine if you are not on a unix like operating system i've also included how to install what's needed for windows but you should if you can follow the unix like installation so let's start by installing gac app and we need only the default installation of GAC app. So by copy and pasting this command that you'll find here, but you can of course also find here on the GAC app webpage and pressing enter, this command will automatically start the installation. And for all the questions asked, you can just choose the default option since it is okay for us. Once you have installed GAC app, you have to run source.bashrc, which will just restart the terminal. So you can also close and reopen the terminal. This will do the same. And then we make sure to have the last version of GAC app by running GAC app upgrade. Now, using GAC app, um, some common programs that we'll need are Cabal and GAC. And Cabal is just a package manager for ASCAL. If you come from the programming basics course, it's very similar to NPM. And we can install Cabal by running, of course, GAC app install Cabal. And once you have installed Cabal, you can also run GAC app install GAC. And GAC stands for Glorious ASCAL compiler. So we know that GAC is a compiler, much like the G we saw for C. And by running GAC app install GAC, you will install, of course, GAC. Now, GAC app installs all the software in the .gac app slash bin folder and you'll see there are and you'll see that I already have lots of software in here. So in order to have programs like GAC or Cabal directly available in our terminal, we'll need to add the GAC app slash bin to the path environment variable and we can do this in 
Unix-like operating system by editing the home slash bash rc file and adding to the end of the file the export path with this value here and it is important to have the colon and then again dollar sign and path so that we don't overwrite totally the original path environment variable and once you have added this line to the end of the bash rc file you can restart the terminal by again running source bash rc or restart the terminal by closing and reopen it and once you have completed the step above you can check everything is fine by running gac version and cabal version and in this case you can see i have the 8.10.7 for gac and the 3.6.2.0 version for cabal and we can already check if gac is working by copying and pasting here this snippet and we see that we get quite a some things what i'm telling here is just to create a new file that i call test gac.hs and hs means that this is an ascal file and inside that file i want there to be some very simple code then i run gac with that file we just created and we see that here is compiling the main and this results in some files for which the test gac which is the same name of the ascal file is the executable result so by typing dot slash test gac i'm running the executable and we see that the string is printed out so if this piece of code went through correctly, we can assume that we installed what is needed in order to start writing Haskell programs. But in order to write our Haskell code, we may want to have an IDE. So I have prepared some notes to set up VS code in order for us to write Haskell code. And what we'll need to do is just to open VS Code and then go in the extension that you'll find here on this bar of VS Code and search for the Haskell syntax highlighting extension. Otherwise, our files in Haskell will be just plain text. So I suggest to install this extension here and also we'll need to install the Haskell language server extension which as you can read here implements the features specified in the language server protocol and these features are things like autocomplete or documentation when overing some words in our file so we can get these features by installing the Haskell language server always from the extension and I can find it already here and by installing this extension we will have those features um, an important note here is that this extension needs to find GAC as command available if you follow the step specified before you should have no problem what that means is just that if we open a new terminal here in Visual Studio Code, we should be able to run GAC without problem. And this is true. So we know that this extension will work. If this is not happening, you may want to go through the previous step once again to make sure you everything is working correctly. So in this video, we got the essential tools that we'll need in order to write some Haskell code. Starting from the very next video, we are going to have a look at what Haskell is capable 
off. In any case, I want to thank you for your time and I want you to remember that if you had the occasion to learn something from this video, you should consider to subscribe to the channel and to like the video. And if you really want to support this educational content, you can always delegate your ADA to Harmonic Pool so that not only you will support the creation of this content, but you will also earn interest on top of that. With that being said, I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.